Fantasy Football League podcast. We are halfway through the fantasy football season. I can't believe it's gone this fast already, and the standings could not be closer. And um, yeah, it's getting crazy. Um, luckily, we have no buys this week. There's, I think, two teams next week, and then 10 is kind of a pretty big bye week. I think there's maybe four teams. Um, so it's getting down to the the nitty gritty, so to speak. But uh, halfway through the season, unfortunately, we also have a lot of injuries that have amounted, and uh, a lot just happened this past day, to be honest, um, and this past weekend. But overall, who would you say has been like your biggest surprise of the first half of the season? Positive surprise or negative surprise? We can do both if you have. Um positive i mean obviously uh lamar jackson is playing lights out i can't say that's necessarily a surprise but i heard some people on sports talk radio throwing his name in the hat as a possible mvp candidate on the season uh five touchdowns this past weekend Mm -hmm. uh he's winning people their uh matchups uh you could also say derrick henry i mean those two is a one-two punch uh, with the Ravens is going yeah. to win championships. If you have either one and God forbid, both of them on your fantasy team, mm-hmm. you're going to be steamrolling through. Um, so those two guys immediately come to mind as far as pleasant surprises. And, you know, I just got to follow up on what you said, as far as negative surprises, I don't know what's happening with injuries this season. It's, it's unlike anything we've ever seen. I mean, mm-hmm. and injuries have always been part of the game, but We've lost so many stars this season, yeah. either on IR or an extended uh, layoff or season-ending injuries. Right. And I, I hate to say this, but um, Godwin was overheard saying on Monday night that his career was over. Now, mm. I, I find that hard to believe. They said he's going to be undergoing surgery, and I'm, yeah. I'm sure he'll come back, but I guess he was so distraught that he said his career was over. Mm. And I, you know, I didn't want to look at the replay. I saw a photo where his foot was kind of turned to the side. Yeah. I, um, you know, I'm wishing the guy the best and I hope he comes back next season, but these injuries have been devastating and, uh, it's, that's what's going to make and break a championship this year. As far as fantasy goes is who remains standing with the most, healthy players they've drafted. Yeah, it, it is unfortunate. The thing that I saw um, that's interesting about Godwin, he he supposedly dislocated his ankle. They don't know to what extent. Um, if it's clean, which is very unlikely, there is a chance he could come back, um, and then it's more like a regular break where it'll be you know a month, month and a half. But most likely he's torn other ligaments in there, so it's most likely uh, season-ending, unfortunately. Um, and then the other thing that, I mean, people were trying to read lips all the time. And the one that I saw of, of him on the cart, they had said, they thought that he said like, what a shame or something like that. Um, but the other, uh, tricky thing is he's a free agent this off season Mm. and to be hurt going into free agency is always tough. So a lot of people that, you know, are thinking about numbers and things like that are thinking that Tampa Bay may not bring him back. Interesting. <clears throat> you know what I, I just heard uh, while I was out in my car moments ago uh, is teams that are NFL teams that are sort of throwing their hands in the air thinking, okay, our, our, I don't think we're going to go deep into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They're starting to look at really high-profile trades during yeah. this uh, trade uh, period. And one of the names I heard thrown out there was Cooper Cup. Yeah, it's being thrown out there. Yeah, as a possible. And with the losses in <laughs> San Francisco and Los Angeles, or not Los Angeles, um, uh, Tampa, mm-hmm. uh, Cooper Cup would fit right in on one of those uh, offenses. Uh, Stafford's name has been thrown around too, even though I think he's kind of coming close to the end of his career. But yeah, Cooper Cup, I think <laughs> you know, despite his injuries the last two seasons, I think still has a lot of years left in him. So. It's going to be interesting during this trade period to see where some of these um, key athletes will end up. Yeah, it'll definitely be something to monitor. Um, And, yeah, it's unfortunate that injuries have kind of plagued part of the season, um, especially recently with the the season-ending ones. 
But the the biggest <laughs> disappointment for me, and it's maybe just because now he's on one of my fantasy teams, as far as like non injuries go, even though he's been banged up a little bit, Travis Etienne has just been awful. What if, after that stellar season he had last year? Yeah, coming off high, I think he was like running back three or something on the season. I've seen people say that they drafted him as their first running back in the draft. Some, you know, took him a uh, first round over. Uh, Derek Henry and over Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Uh, that's brutal. Mm-hmm. Just brutal. Yeah. So a lot of high profile guys either injured or just, you know, not playing as some people might have expected. Um, I think another one you could even throw in there and, and kind of to a lesser extent is like CJ Stroud. You were trying to get him on draft day. Yeah. Maybe now you're happy you didn't. Maybe. He hasn't had too many crazy blow up games. Not that there's been many good alternatives. A lot of quarterbacks that I thought. You know, had started off the season pretty solid. Are tanking? Mm-hmm. You look at guys like uh, um, the New York Giants, Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones. You know, he had a stretch where he looked fairly solid, solid, and then he's put together a bunch of stinkers in a row. I don't know when his last touchdown throw was. Yeah, they said he has when uh, they played Philadelphia, right? Mm-hmm. They said he hadn't thrown a touchdown uh, in that stadium in years, <laughs> and and so you know, there's not a lot of good alternatives out there so Mm -hmm. who knows who knows you know look at look at a a guy like um uh what's his name in tampa bay uh quarterback baker Um, mayfield baker mayfield you know he was looking really solid everyone was praising him and then he put up a stinker and of course he lost two his two key wide receivers even though he was looking bad before he lost his wide receiver yeah but you get these quarterbacks with this up and down play. They look good for a stretch, and then they look just awful for a stretch. So, yeah, yeah. if you have a, a quarterback that's been consistent, consider yourself lucky because that seems to not be the case this season. Yeah, and when we get to my team, we'll talk about how I I did, but um, things have <laughs> changed a little bit. But luckily, I have a good backup. So let's just get right into the matchups then, because I think we are going to need a little more time for the waiver wire this week because. There's some interesting stuff going on. Uh, but our highest score of the week was Ian's ingenious team. I think that's back to back weeks, or you know, maybe he was the highest scorer a couple weeks ago. Well, he he was the high scorer when I faced him yeah. two weeks ago. And I think he has a three game win streak going. Yeah, his team so, is one of the hotter teams. Him and Tracy's team yeah. have really been doing good. And unfortunately he beat Sammy and uh Sammy falls oh. to 0 and seven. And we talked to Sammy on Monday. And uh, it's no more of a laughing matter. No, it's not. I feel bad for the guy. And, you know, I think I mentioned last week on the podcast, I've been doing fantasy football for like 20 years, and I don't know if I've ever seen a team go 0-7. Yeah. I do remember one year I went 0-6, and, and everyone was calling me Owen, O-W-E-N, <laughs> because every week it was 0-3, 0-4, 0-5, 0-6. But I don't think I've ever seen anyone go 0-7. And yeah. it's terrible terrible luck yeah because he hasn't really had like big injuries or anything like i know in our our espn league um i believe my cousin is zero and six or zero and seven now um but he's had he had like pacheco and stuff like that so he's had some injury issues um whereas sammy just i don't, I don't know how to explain it he it's just, can't find the right combination yeah and then, you know he starts a guy like tank dell now i don't know if you've heard anything but how do you explain Tank Dell's zero? Yeah, he, he, in a couple leagues, he got one point because was he returning of, kicks or a something? return, I believe, or something. <laughs> and if you cross a certain threshold, you get a point. Um, but in this league, he got zero. I think he had only one target. But if you look, like C.J. Stroud is Sammy's quarterback. He had 86 passing yards. That's nothing. Yeah. And they ran the ball so well that they didn't have to throw. But you would have picked figured that without Nico Collins, Tank Goodell would have been, you know, right up there with Stephon Diggs as being the top two guys. Yeah. But they're just, they're not throwing the ball very much. And you it's, know, uh, imagine, you know, like I, I like to have that quarterback wide receiver hookup. Mm-hmm. And with, like you said, Nico Collins out, imagine going, okay, I got the Stroud Dell hookup yeah. and they combine for 5.34 points mm-hmm. combined. Yeah. That's, that's, you can't predict this game. Yeah, so it's real ugly. Um, like I said, it's nice that he's gotten A.J. Brown back. He's been good since he's returned. He's gotten a touchdown in each game. Um, A-Chan, 
he did better this game. I would expect him to really step up maybe this week because they are supposed to get Tua back uh, Mm -hmm. this week, so that might help the Miami offense just in general. Josh Jacobs received his first receiving touchdown of his career uh, this past weekend for a good game. But one of the bigger disappointments, I think, in the league has been Dalton Kincaid for Buffalo. Yep. A lot of people thought he was going to be the number one guy. Now they traded for Amari Cooper, so it might just be back to being, you know, another tight end like the rest of the people. Um, And then J.K. Dobbins and James Cook, they've been playing pretty well, but James Cook was a little banged up going into this game. He only got a touchdown saving the day. And J.K. Dobbins just, I don't know, that was the— It was a weird game One of the worst games, and I— yeah. Could not watch it. You know, what's weird is uh, I think I mentioned before that I I had sort of a wealth of running backs and was forced to cut somebody and just flat out drop Dobbins. So Sammy just jumped on him, Mm -hmm. picked him up, started him, and couldn't crack double digits. And it was supposed to be a good matchup. Uh, From what I understand, the Cardinals' uh, run defense was at the bottom of the league. Yeah. And, uh, man. I, I couldn't watch. You watched the game last night, right? I yeah. couldn't watch it because it was uh, what, on ESPN Plus, and I wasn't going to subscribe. Yeah, it was not worth watching, though, to be Yeah, to it was a fair. terrible, terrible <laughs> game on both sides of the ball. Uh, Chargers couldn't score a touchdown. It was mm-hmm. all field goals. Yeah. And so when you're when you're counting on your running back and they can't get it in the end zone, that's a bad day. Yeah. And then meanwhile, Ian's team, you know, I thought his his problem would be quarterback, and it, it technically has been, but it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't hindered his team. In the slightest, Amon Ross St. Brown had a big game, 112 yards uh, and a touchdown. Yeah, Mike Evans, like we said, he did get a touchdown, but he did get hurt in the game, so he could be out for a week or two, maybe more potentially. Uh, Kenneth Walker continues to be one of the hottest running backs um, in Since fantasy right back, now. W- you yeah. know, he was injured, and when he came back from injury, who who could have predicted that he would come back from injury and play as well as he has the past few weeks. Yeah, for Seattle to kind of be struggling a little bit in in a sense in their pass game, but their run game has been pretty solid. And Kenneth Walker's just been soaking up all the touchdowns. And then Saquon Barkley, he could have had a career year or a career day against the Giants, but I don't know if you saw the clip that he decided not to. Yeah, he gave him the option to come in and and break his single game best uh yardage game. Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, let the young guys have fun. And boy, oh boy, that shows you that this guy's a team player. Yeah, and uh, maybe that's a little bit of respect to Giants fans as well um, for all the years that they had him. Maybe that was something to do with it. But he had 176 rushing yards on them yeah. and a touchdown with a couple catches. He's been one of the best running backs in the league this year. He's Rock had Rock. a couple of down games, but yeah. for the most part, mm-hmm. I think he's right up there with Derrick Henry as far as um, league MVP at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, another sneaky MVP is Brock Bowers. He's I don't been, know how sneaky he is because he's been consistently yeah. good all I think, season. I think just going into the year, I know, like I said, I knew he had a lot of talent just from his college tape that he's more built like a wide receiver or plays like a wide receiver than a tight end. But because Las Vegas traded Devontae Adams, they were without Jacoby Myers. He's become their number one target, and he's just having an incredible rookie season. Yeah, he's one of those guys <laughs> where on draft day, if you're like, oh, I'd like to stash a couple of rookies on my roster, mm-hmm. I, I tend to stash a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, Bowers wasn't on my radar. I mean, who's going to say, oh, I want that rookie tight end? <laughs> uh, anyone who took a chance on Bowers on draft day is being re- uh, rewarded. Now, I don't know if, if he's a product of necessarily fantasy draft day or if someone just snatched him up off of waivers, but... Uh, he's been paying off to whoever has him on their starting lineup. Yeah, I think he was drafted in most leagues. Um, it's just people are – it's hard to choose tight ends of which ones are going to actually work, even though, you know, he has really good tape. So did Kyle Pitts, and Kyle Pitts had a decent rookie season, but he struggled since, so you just never know. Uh, Jaden Reed had a down game. I, I think that's more <coughs> more expected to be how Jaden Reed is, very up and down. He's been pretty lucky in the touchdown department. Um, but I mean, he can blow up at any moment. Garrett Pick, Wilson Pickens is the one who was the ball magnet in that game and everything went his way. Yeah. Um, Garrett Wilson, he, um, didn't really struggle too much with Devonte Adams being out there. They tried to force it to Devonte, but it didn't really account to a whole lot. So Garrett Wilson had an okay day. He could have had a better day. You and I were texting about the one play where, oh yeah, Rogers 
hit him right in the numbers. Yeah, and he, but I think because the defender was like waving his arm, it it threw off the timing and it bounced mm-hmm. right off of his chest into the hands of the defender who took yeah. it uh, a good distance <laughs> the other direction. So he could have had a better day. That was such a freaky play. Yeah. Um. On the benches, nothing was really left. It was nice to see Nick Chubb get in the <clears throat> in the end zone for his first game back. I think they're still going to slow roll him back into the lineup. Hopefully for Sammy, Jonathan Taylor gets healthy. Um, maybe he has a quarterback decision between Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Um, but we'll see from there. And then Ian's got Kareem Hunt. So if, if Mike Evans is out, he might just pivot to Kareem Hunt at a flex position. He's he's loaded at running back. I mean, <clears throat> you know, he's starting Walker and Barkley in the two RB spots. Because right. at first – I see Hunt on his bench. I'm like, why is he on the bench? Right now he's yeah. the Chiefs' number one guy. But then you see Barkley and Walker, and you're like, okay, I see. So, yeah, he. I, I would try to get Hunt in on a flex spot because Hunt is their number one guy. And until Pacheco comes back, which sounds like might be getting a little closer. Yeah, there's, there's some hope there. Yeah, but right now uh, Hunt's the guy on a, a team that can score points. So, Ian, if you're listening, get <laughs> Hunt in your flex spot. Uh, The next matchup, um, Tracy taking on Becky's team. Becky coming off a big win and going right back to the losing column, (laughs) unfortunately. Um, Tracy, like I said, another team that's been really doing well, put up 131 points. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, kind of a down game, but they got into the end zone, so that saved um, Chase's day. Justin Jefferson also getting into the end zone, not having as big of a game as we maybe thought he would against the Lions, but... He's been one of the most consistent guys. He's been around 20 points almost every I was game. Say 21 points is nothing to be disappointed no. by. I mean, <clears> you know, and the Lions are kind of soft on wide receivers. They're tough on the run, but soft on wide receivers. Yeah. So I think Jefferson delivered as far as expectations go. I mean, yeah, people are like, oh, my God, against this Lions defense, <laughs> he's going to have three touchdowns. And that wasn't the case, but, yeah. man, you give me 20 points from my wide receiver, oh, yeah. I'm happy. He just hasn't have had, like, one of those blow-up Justin right. Jefferson games, but he's been super consistent. Um, Alvin Kamara, one of his worst games of his career. Yeesh. He had six catches for 14 yards and then 10 rushing yards. So without those six catches, he would have had two points. And uh, that's what saves Alvin Kamara uh, week after week. The surprise of the week for me was still playing Javante Williams. Now, I have him in one of my leagues, and I thought this was the only matchup you could play him in, but I believe Tracy has, um, yeah, she has Trace, Chase Brown on her bench. She made the right call. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll give it to her for that. Twenty. But I would not points. have made that decision, and it worked out really well. Sure did. And uh, now Javante Williams actually gets another soft matchup. They're playing the Carolina Panthers this week. So you might want to just keep him in your lineup at this point. Yeah. Uh, Sam Laporta continues to disappoint. He's getting, he's like averaging a catch a game, man. I yeah. don't know what's going on there. The Lions are just, they're cruising right now, and they they haven't had to deploy him, it seems like. Uh, the unfortunate thing, Zay Flowers, also on that injury report. Did he get hurt during the game? Yeah, I think okay, he tweaked his ankle. Um, people think that there's a chance that he could miss a week or two, potentially. Um, like that I said. make would make uh, Bateman desirable. Yeah. Uh, Joe Mixon continues to be amazing since he's come back from injury, which is Multiple wild. Multiple touchdown games. Yeah, over 100 yards, I think, in both games. Um, Fairbairn continues to be one of the better kickers in the league this year. And the Jets' defense, yikes. You know what? The Jets' offense has not impressed, but the defense was kind of reliable early in the season. Mm-hmm. Now they're, they're not doing anything on either side of the ball. The Jets are a mess right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um, on Becky's side, Jalen Hurts, he's been pretty solid since uh, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown have come back, uh, so he's been a consistent starter. Marvin Harrison in that disappointment slot. Yeah. He has been awful, and I don't know if it's scheme or what. Like I said, I didn't pay much attention to the game last night because it was boring, um, but they're just not giving Marvin Harrison the ball, and he's been a a failure from the stance of how early you drafted him. Yeah, and it, it's surprising because early in the season, he looked like he could have been a, a top five, top ten receiver at the end of the season. And then he went in, he, he got hurt, right? He mm-hmm. was hurt, but he's been in a slump that he can't seem to break out of. And I don't know, 
you know, Murray's running the heck out of the ball, but he doesn't seem to be getting the ball to the receivers. Yeah. And uh, I know last night, last night there was a, a pass that Marvin Harrison got wide open on, would have been an easy touchdown, and Murray just didn't see him. So I know mm. that's happened a couple times this season, so uh -huh. I'm not sure what that is. Deontay Johnson, who's been one of the better, more reliable receivers in the league, put up a real stinker. The, the Panthers Brutal. got destroyed by the Commanders, and uh, Deontay Johnson suffered for it. The nice thing is Deontay Johnson is another one of those names on the trade market. So he could go to one of these better teams and maybe maybe see an uptick. But I do think the, the Panthers are an okay offense where they can bounce back. Um, James Conner has been one of the bright spots for Arizona. David Montgomery fumbled the ball and didn't get in the end zone. Well, he did leave the game for a little bit, and mm -hmm. that was really concerning. Like, yeah. oh, no, not not uh, Montgomery. But he, he toughed it up and uh, came back in and played the ball. But... You know, that that fumble, it's it's hard to blame him. I mean, it was a great defensive play. Mm -hmm. He's moving the ball. He's got it. And the guy came up from behind and just punched it out of his hands. And yeah. what can you do about it? And but, I feel like I've seen even more of those this year than almost ever yeah. of guys just punching the ball out really easily. But that's the great thing about the Lions is if Montgomery's down, then Gibbs is up. If Gibbs is down, Montgomery's up. They are a great one-two punch in the on this team. Yeah. Now known as Sonic and Knuckles. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Trey McBride mm -hmm. continues to be, you know, a solid tight end. He double hasn't digits every week. Nothing exciting. Yeah. But he hasn't digits. been crazy, but he's been good. Um, Drake London. He's been amazing ever since I traded him away in my other league. Yeah. He's been lights <laughs> out. I mean, he's, he's the guy that people have been expecting the last few seasons and He's getting a touchdown almost every week, and he's been uh, Cousins' yeah. go-to guy. It's three straight games of a touchdown and six catches in at least 60 yards. Mm. So he's been key um, to that Falcons offense. Jackson Smith and Jigwa also kind of just struggling in the Seattle offense. It seems like every time that they think that Tyler Lockett's too old, that he's going to not be there, he just steps up for this team, and he's the number two wide receiver. But as we'll see later, DK Metcalf is hurt, so maybe this is time for Jackson Smith to uh, step up for a little bit. Um, on the bench, Becky did leave George Pickens on the bench, and he mm. finally had a blow-up game now that Russell Wilson is the starter. That was still a surprise to me that he played that well. Yeah. Um, so he might move into the starting lineup going forward, but um, luckily it didn't, didn't really change the matchup all too much. Um, the next matchup we go to, oh, it happens to be ours. <laughs> Me versus Joe. And man, this, I thought I had it kind of in the bag. And I wasn't going to say anything because I, you know, you had a lot of guys left. But man, did it get close down to the wire. I was shocked. I, I actually was shocked, you know, in the fourth quarter of the, uh, the, uh, what, what was, was it the, yeah, the Tampa, Tampa yeah. Bay game. Tampa and Baltimore. I, it, I just, you know, Otten had, was just catching pass after pass. Mm -hmm. And the gap kept getting closer and closer. And I'm like, wait a second. I might have a shot here. Yeah. I mean, before the game, I was, what, like 40 points down with three players to go. So I'm like, eh, I yeah. might have a shot. And you and it seemed like Tampa Bay had a really slow start, too. So, yeah. like, Godwin was struggling. They didn't even give it to Otten a whole lot at the beginning. And then all of a sudden, it was like they ramped it up yep. in the second half. And then, just to make things more nerve-wracking for you, the game is pretty much over at this point. Tampa Bay kick has an onside kick. They mm -hmm. recover. That gives them another offensive drive. Otten, Otten, Godwin, Godwin. Gap is closing. Mm -hmm. They they uh, you know give the ball up, get the ball back on a meaningless last second drive. Again, Otten, Otten, Godwin. The the gap gets down to about three points. Yeah, Godwin catches the ball goes down and is done for the season mm -hmm. my game ended with that injury and I came up about three points short mm -hmm. and that was way more dramatic than I thought it was going to be yeah I can't help but wonder that <laughs> if a Godwin hadn't got hurt on that play one or two more passes to Otten or Godwin would have clinched it for me the only the only thing that made me feel safe at that point was I knew that like there wasn't really a way unless it would have like been really dinky passes 
that they were on too short of a field where those guys would have had to been targeted in the end zone to win the game. Yeah. So I at least knew that it just it was basically touchdown or bust at that point. Yeah. So that was the only thing that was making me feel good. But I did see Baker looking towards Otten's way way too much for comfort. Yeah, and I'm, you know, a cotton or cotton. It's he's, he's it says C Otten on my yeah. thing. I said cotton. Well, that's um, what my phone kept auto correcting to every time I tried <laughs> texting you about him. But uh, he was a waiver wire pickup just to fill in a tight end <laughs> by week empty roster spot, and now I have a tight end dilemma because Otten, especially with Godwin going down, Evans going yeah. down, Otten is going to get a lot of attention. So yeah, he might just stay in my lineup until further notice. Right. Um, obviously what killed me over the weekend and you should not take any pride in this. There was no <laughs> warning whatsoever that Debo Samuel was going to be out of the game. As a matter of fact, he played a few snaps early on, was pulled out of the game, was revealed the next day to have had pneumonia fluid in his lungs. Apparently he was very serious. He may have been hospitalized briefly mm -hmm. and he may even miss more time because of it. But imagine all Debo owners having <laughs> no warning that this was going to happen and getting zero points. You count your blessings, my friend, because that was the difference in the game. Uh, had I known I could have benched Debo, I could have played Hubbard, who had 11 points. I could have played Bigsby, who had 23 points uh, in that flex spot. Even Bucky Irving could have given me the win. So uh, the fantasy football gods were cruel. Gave me zero uh, points in that spot. You know, well, my team tried to help you out. I had Jaden Daniels get hurt. He, <laughs> oh. he took one for the team. He only had five points. Um, I don't know why I rolled out Dalton Schultz again after he struggled last week. He only had three points. Devontae Smith got you point eight, so that almost equals out the Debo yeah. issue. That was shocking. That was a shocking result because he had a decent game last week, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so... I only won because of my waiver wire pickup of the Denver defense against New Orleans. Points, starting the week off with 20 points. And then, of course, like you mentioned it, Jameer Gibbs stepping up in lieu of uh, David Montgomery going down. Had two touchdowns, 116 rushing yards, and 44 yards receiving for 32 total points. My running backs um, are looking the way that I expected them to when I drafted them. And uh, T. Higgins, he's been a big surprise. He's been just as good, if not better, than Jamar Chase yeah. since he's come back um, from his little injury. Yeah, And um, I do think it's interesting because you mentioned like Tank Bigsby or somebody on your bench. We both had benches that had really good days. I had Brian mm. Thomas, who was in my lineup for a while. I decided to switch him last minute for Devontae Smith. Um, Aaron Jones. Finally sitting Josh Allen, and you know he blows up. Aaron Jones, I wasn't expecting to play him just because he's against the Lions. Right. But he got that early touchdown, and I was like, wow, okay. And uh, he actually ended up having a good game. So really close matchup. I, I'm i glad that you only lost by three because I was really thinking that, like, Otten was going to get one more catch and you were going to lose by, like, one or something <laughs> like that. But think about this. So a guy who's been playing fairly well, Brock Purdy, had – Three picks in that game. One was in the end zone. You take any one of those picks away, I'm that much closer. Had he thrown a touchdown instead of throwing a pick in the end zone, I win that game. Brock Purdy was a huge disappointment. But you, he, he also got lucky. He got two rushing touchdowns. Imagine That's true. if you take that away, then he had a terrible day and you're not even close. Right. No, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And that's but that's the fun part about <laughs> fantasy is thinking of all these what if situations. Um it can kind of make you go stir crazy. Um I know it does for us sometimes. But um, it's just crazy. I got to praise uh Brees Hall who's been on fire the past few weeks. Yep. He's the only guy doing anything <laughs> on that chance offense. 26 points. Kyron Williams, who has a touchdown in every single game this season and several games dating back to last season, yeah. 19 points, uh, two touchdowns, I believe. Uh, he has he, he might be my current favorite player in the NFL right now. I The guy has just been a touchdown machine. So. Yeah, him and Derrick Henry have not had a – they've had a touchdown in every single game. That's amazing. So, so yeah, I got to give those guys, uh, you know, they – they did what they could, you know. I'm doing my part. They did their part. Right. Um, so, good matchup, as usual. And uh, 
thank you for letting me take the victory because now the standings uh, are even closer. They are. And we'll take a look at them. I gotta, I gotta get my act together though because I've lost two of three now. So, mm. and the final matchup, Marie beating uh, Malik's team, <sighs> one twenty-one to eighty-six. Don't get me started. Um, like I said, we knew that he didn't play Taysom Hill. We talked about that on Thursday, so I uh, talked to him about it and stuff. Ended up having Travis Etienne, who unfortunately <laughs> uh, got the late call of being out. Um, so he got a zero there. He wasn't helped by playing Jamison Williams, who got a, uh, 0.6 because he got a catch, but negative four yards. Is he looking at suspension too now? Yeah. Two games. So a two game suspension for, uh, Uh, performance enhancing. What do they call it? It's not drugs now. It's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so who knows what happened there? Tyreek Hill, biggest disappointment in fantasy as well but mostly due to Tua being out. He only had two points. Again, another high draft pick that has underperformed seven weeks into the season. Yeah. The only bright spot for um, Malik's team is Lamar Jackson, who you said is basically a fantasy MVP. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, not for Malik's team. Um, But unfortunately, too, like on Malik's bench, Rashad White came back this week, and he had a blow-up game. I don't know if people really expected that. I think he was on a lot of fantasy benches. He, I, in another league, I had him. I didn't even know he was playing uh, this yeah. week. I had him on my bench, and I lost in that league because if had I started him, I would have won. Yeah, Keon Coleman had a really big game, even though you know Buffalo got Amari Cooper in a trade. So that was kind of a surprise. Um, and then on Marie's side, luckily again, to kind of even things out, Cortland Sutton got a big zero and he played the whole game. Um, So she was pretty frustrated with that. She asked me if he even played and I said, yes, he did. He (laughs) was in the game, but he didn't even get targeted. I don't know how that's possible in the NFL anymore. How does a player play an entire game healthy and not have anything come? Especially when he's technically their number one receiver. Yeah. Um, It's, it's wild. Makes no sense. Um, Marie continues to go with Jared Goff, which has been the correct choice over Patrick Mahomes. I've uh, here's something interesting, especially considering they're both on the same fantasy team. I heard people uh, sports talk radio today say is Goff the best quarterback in the NFL right now, which could be an argument. Mm Mm-hmm. And I also heard people say, in fantasy football, is Mahomes droppable? Uh, he has underperformed all yep. season long. And I that, went through this last year. I was going to say that stayed away. We're at like a season and a half of fantasy of Patrick Mahomes just not being all that much fantasy value. Yeah, which is crazy. And he'll probably win another Super Bowl. <laughs> it's weird how he can, you know, lead his team to mm-hmm. victory week after week after week. But anyone who has him on fantasy, they're not getting the points from him. Yeah. Um, another star player getting hurt in this game, DK Metcalf. Um, but luckily he had a big game before that. He had 99 yards, a touchdown, four catches. That was all in the first half. Um, he has a MCL strain, I believe it is. Yeah. Um, so they think he's week to week. So we're not sure about what his status is. Um, yeah, it's an MCL sprain and they say it's a minor one. Um, so who knows? He might miss this week and maybe be able to be back next week. Um, but you have to make it cordance. Um, Derek Henry, like we said, just, Incredible. Now, he, we have to talk about our text conversation yesterday. Well, this just and, goes into your fantasy season, I feel like. Well, but also the announcers, the game announcers were commenting on it too, that Henry didn't look right the first half of the game. He only had, at one point, he only had like three carries, mm-hmm. and Justice Hill was the focus of the offense. And so even the announcers are like, something, something's not right. And then... Henry just started busting off these yeah. big chunks of yardage. And here's the interesting thing. Even when he did break off those big chunks, it didn't look like he was running at full speed. Mm-hmm. That's how freaking scary Derrick Henry yeah. is. He's not. He didn't seem to be running at full speed, but would get like a 50-yard run before getting tackled. Yeah. Now, on two of those big runs, he didn't even reach the end zone, but those two combined, I think, were 100 yards alone. So something. I'm standing by the fact that something <laughs> looked off but it's Derrick Henry, where yeah. even at 75%, he's still better than most players on the field. I think something funny, if you want to do it, is go on Twitter, find Derrick Henry's, um, maybe his second run, like 40-yard run, and compare it to Kyler Murray's 40-yard run, 
And because Kyler is so much smaller in stature, he has to take so many more steps <laughs> that he looks way faster than Derrick Henry does. And I, I bet you it's pretty funny to compare the two. Yeah, he's just got the big old gazelle stride. Yeah. Um, Najee Harris continuing to actually have a pretty good streak of games here um, for Pittsburgh as it looks like they're kind of turning the corner. Uh, Travis Kelsey Another down came game. back down to earth. He had two good back-to-back weeks since Rasheed Rice had been out. Um, but... It, that was an ugly game, Kansas City versus San Francisco. It seemed like both defenses were kind of taking care of business. Amari Cooper scored a touchdown in his first game uh, with you, Josh Allen. I love that moment. I've been seeing this all over TikTok where he's lined up in the slot. He looks over at who's yeah. the other uh, receiver, Buffalo receiver, that was to his left. Um, it might have been Coleman. It might have been. But uh, the, the press was asking him, did you tell him what the play was? And he goes, I didn't tell him what the play was. I just... I verified what the play was, but you see them looking at each other and Coleman like gives them some sort of a hand signal. Cooper runs in the end zone, catches a touchdown. And I'm like, that's either luck or just talent that you're not even sure what the play is. Mm -hmm. And you're in the right place at the right time to catch a touchdown in the end. Yeah. And I've heard that from receivers like that. If there's time where like they're doing a hurry up offense and they might not fully hear the play, they just line out there and they just, you know, they've been playing for so long and the, the best of the best, they just kind of know how to get open. It seemed like that was kind of what Amari did there and got, I got him a touchdown. I got to say I'm happy for the guy because I think yeah. he was in a miserable situation in Cleveland and I think he's going to thrive in Buffalo. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, those are uh, our matchups for week seven. So let's go to the waiver wire. Like I said, with all the injuries, there's a lot of interesting Ugh. guys that are out there. Um, quarterback, like, a, like we always say each week in a small league, there's always a lot of really good options for quarterback. Caleb Williams, kind of the number one option up against Washington. Um, Dak Prescott, I wouldn't think I wouldn't trust him just yet coming off of their buy. Aaron Rodgers has looked awful. I thought he would have been, would have been a good option, but I wouldn't trust that right now. And he's just, he just looks lost out there. Yeah. Right? You know, he's had flashes where he's made some really great throws, but, you know, he's getting multiple turnovers per game. And it's yeah. just, I think this is it. I think we're seeing this kind of, in a way, this reminds me of when Brett Favre was a Jet. Like, he was really great that year he was in Minnesota, but then when he went to the Jets, he looked awful and his yeah. career was over. And I think we're seeing the uh, the, the the embers dying <laughs> out in, uh, in his career. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want a, a good quality ad that might turn your season around if if your quarterback is struggling, Tua is supposed to be coming back, like I said, this week. Um, if you believe in him, I don't necessarily do. I, But he makes their offense run a lot better, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so he'd be a good option. And then as far as position players, running back is not so great. Um, but if you look, Becky dropped Jalen Waddell. And if you need a wide receiver that could maybe do something, Jalen Waddell could be um, that kind of guy. He's had a terrible season, but again, with Tua coming back, could be a way to turn him around. Uh, Khalil I, uh, Shakir, pretty I, good. I, I'm obviously in need of wide receivers because on our ON TV league, I lost both Godwin and Ayuk this yeah. weekend. So I am going to be hitting the waiver wire this week. There's a couple of names that jump out at me. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I should say who they are because uh, we're all going to be uh, hitting the waiver wire yeah. this week. But there's a couple of names that jump out at me only again, because we're in an eight team league. There's some talent yeah. on the waiver wire, but there's a couple of guys I'm eyeballing and uh, I hope I get them both. Yeah. And there's a couple of the replacement guys. There's so the hard part with the replacements and, and maybe I'll mention them so I don't tip your hand, but the replacements for Tampa Bay are either going to be Jalen McMillan or Sterling Shepard, or a combination of both for Tampa Bay. Jalen McMillan is more of an outside guy, so I would think if if Evans is out, he might be the better option for that. But there's a chance that Sterling Shepard could uh, jump into the Godwin role. Now, I'm not sure if that's exactly what's going to happen, um, but it could be. So either one of those guys could blow up. And then for the 49ers, either Ricky Pearsall, who's the rookie that came back from the shooting early in the season. Oh, right. Um, He's looked pretty solid, but of course, Jawan Jennings is out there, and we saw him have a blow up game um, once before. He's, Although, he's battling an injury right now. So, yeah, he might not play this week. There is still a chance of that. So, the 49ers are kind of just 
they're in this weird void of waiting to see what happens. Cause there is a chance too that Debo gets healthy. Um, but n- nobody really knows. And George Kittle is battling injury. So I would keep a monitor Man. on San Francisco just to see what happens. Um, Lad McConkey out there as well. He's been pretty good, but the Chargers just don't throw that much. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, he seems to be the most consistent guy for Green Bay um, as of recently. And then I mentioned Tyler Lockett. He's been pretty good. So if uh, Metcalf sits out this week, he might be a good uh, bye week replacement in a potential shootout against the Buffalo Bills. Um, I want to uh, let's go back to quarterback for a second. I just want to get your opinion. Yeah. Uh, another major injury uh, this past week was the Cleveland quarterback, and the backup that came in to replace him got hurt. Mm-hmm. So now we're down to Jameis Winston. Winston. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Winston going forward, starting for the Browns? Um, they lose Cooper, of course. That's going to hurt him. Yeah. But uh, do you think he's worth stashing or looking at? Not in a smaller league, just because he is so prone to turnovers. But in a bigger league where, you know, quarterback is a little bit harder to find, he could be a good speculative ad because we know we haven't seen him in a couple of years, but whenever he comes in, he is not afraid to throw the ball. Yeah. And so he can put up big numbers, but that also goes with he's kind of the old school gunslinger like Brett Favre. He's similar to a Matthew Stafford where they can go crazy some games. But you got to be ready for turnovers. With the uh, changes that have taken place in Cleveland, a lot one player that a lot of people are high on is Njoku. Mm-hmm. That he's going to be a yeah. heavily targeted receiver. Yeah, he's going to be offense. most likely their number one guy. Um, there's also a young player named Cedric Tillman. Uh, he's one to watch out for. He got like eight targets in this past game. Uh, so you could actually, for once, go after some Cleveland guys. Maybe even Jerry Judy if you think he's going to be good. Um, just because they're going to have somebody that can throw the ball or is not afraid to throw the ball. Um, so I think that's a good option. Um, like you said, tight end is actually kind of an intriguing position right now with David Njoku kind of at the top um, looking really good. Dallas Goddard, I don't know if he's going to be back for sure this week, uh, but he could be back within the next week, and that always lifts Philadelphia's offense. TJ Hawkinson. He's supposed to come back this week. So Hmm. if you're in need of tight end and you think he's going to come back and basically be the tight end uh, that we've known and sort of loved, um, then he could be a really good option. That gives Darnold another target. Right. Hunter Henry, he's been Drake May's number one target. So these rookie or young quarterbacks have been looking at tight ends a lot. So Hunter Henry might be a really good add. Mark Andrews. Woo. Back-to-back touchdown games. And two touchdowns in one game. Yeah, so like he's actually kind of on the upswing. Seems like Baltimore's been throwing the ball a little bit more, and they're going to get into um, some more competitive matchups coming up. So he might be another one that's out there. All of a sudden, again, we're back into, you know, there's some tight ends out there. Mm-hmm. And if you want a part of uh, Carolina's offense, Jatavion Sanders, he's a rookie tight end. He's had really good back-to-back games for them, too, so. Tons of tight end options. Um, let's see if there's any defenses because we've been trying to. There's one that's jumping on out the, at me right now, and I'm thinking I'm possibly, on the defenses. Yeah, I'm, I might put in a way. Oh yeah, the I, are you, you're just talking about Kansas City. <laughs> Kansas City taking on <laughs> yeah, what the Washington Generals of the NFL. Yeah, the Vegas uh, Raiders. Vegas is uh, they're they're ranked uh, second from below. Yeah, or second from bottom. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kansas City can feast on these guys this yeah. week. That's and the, definitely worth a the, stream. The number one option that's projected, the Chargers up against New Orleans because, of course, New Orleans have all those injuries. It worked for me this past week, so maybe yeah. the Chargers are somebody to look at. Um, Houston against Indi- – like, all these top ones are really good. Houston at Indianapolis. Indianapolis, ever since going back to Anthony Richardson, they somehow won the game, but they just don't look good on offense. Chicago up against Washington, who's probably going to have to start Marcus Mariota. Um, that could be a good add. And then I know this probably hurts you a little bit, Joe, but Minnesota up against the Rams. <laughs> the Rams are supposed to get Cooper have cut back this week, but the Rams just don't. They just don't look that good overall. And that's right that's now. why, like I said, the guys on the radio today were saying that looks like the Rams are going to have a fire sale and just start getting rid of people, but. I gotta say, I'm kind of looking forward to that Thursday night game. It's a Thursday night game, mm-hmm. and uh, just you know, seeing Cooper Cup back though will be yeah. nice. 
And, you know, f- coming off the Detroit-Minnesota game, which was an absolute blast, mm-hmm. this game could be fun because yeah, it's- Detroit showed that you can put points on Minnesota. So, mm-hmm. it and should- Kyron Williams has been great. So <laughs> It should be better than our last Thursday night game of Denver and New Orleans. <laughs> so, anything could be better than that. Yeah. Um, now, I, I'm scrolling down here. You know, over the past few weeks, Miami has been sort of a punching bag that any defense you started against Miami, you got double digit yeah. point from. But if Tua comes back, I would steer clear yeah. of starting a defense uh, yeah, I think against there's... Miami until you see what Tua is capable of. Right. Yeah. I would. Everything with Miami is very speculative right now because they their whole offense and their whole season could kind of turn around really quickly here if Tua comes back and they you know, go back to normal, just high-scoring offense. Now, Arizona did keep the Chargers offense out of the end zone, Mm -hmm. and I don't know if that was a statement about the Chargers or a statement about uh, the Cardinals' defense, but it's going to be an interesting one to keep your eye on. Right. Um, All right, let's look at the standings and then go towards uh, next week's matchups. So, at the moment, Joe is tied at the top is record. You are the tiebreaker. You have the most points. Um, but there are three teams at five and two now. Oh man! So it's Joe, Ian, and Marie's team, wow, and then there's really Tracy and I it. at four and five. Malik continues to be in sixth place, and Becky right behind him with Sammy in eighth. So once again, as much as we keep you know talking about Sammy's team, there is still time. <laughs> now he needs. To, we're only at the halfway yeah, point. This is halfway, and Malik has clearly given up on his season. So <laughs> yeah, well. I keep parking it on to Malik, so hopefully he'll he'll figure it out. Um, I know he's he's had some stuff going on, but anyway, there is still a good chance nobody is out of reach yet necessarily. I would say the five and two teams are starting to get there, um, but if Sammy goes on a little run, he he either can get into the playoffs or there's a chance that he is just the guy that plays spoiler to some people. Right. You know, and you got to give it to the guy. He has not given up on his season. No. Every, you know, I keep getting these notifications that he's picking people up and dropping <laughs> yeah. people. And, and he's he's doing everything he can to try and better his team. But yeah. like we said at the beginning of this podcast, he's just having really well, terrible luck. And the other thing, if you look at too, he has the lowest point scored, which is, okay, that, that makes sense. That lines up with eighth place. But he's also had the most points against him. <laughs> That's just luck. So his Bad point luck. differential is insane compared to some people, um, which, you know, it, the league, we have had some kind of top-heavy matchups, so that, that makes a little bit of sense. But, um, yeah, it's just sometimes it just doesn't go your way all the time, so you just have to watch out for it. You know, I remember years ago uh, when I used to play in this really big league, uh, I would write like a weekly article with, with uh, on the website and I was doing some research and I was looking at like, it was getting a little late in this season. And I was looking at the biggest performances from each skill position in the league, who had the biggest game as quarterback, who had the biggest game as running back wide receiver tight end. And as I was looking up these numbers, I found out that each skill position that had the biggest week that week that I played the team that had that (laughs) player. So every skill position that blew up, blew mm-hmm. up against me. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you can say about that. I yeah. don't know how you explain something like that. Right. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, the fantasy gods, I guess. And uh, maybe yeah. maybe you used all your luck when you won the league a couple of years ago. Yeah, there was something about maybe planetary alignment or something <laughs> because I, it's been going downhill since. And I sent you the little screen grab uh, last night that with all the injuries that have been going on in this league, the only TV team that I have has been affected a, a little bit. But yeah. the other league that we're in, uh, the RT Sports League, I have seven guys that I drafted that that I had on my roster in week one who are either done for the season or had ex- extended periods of absence like Cooper Cup. Yeah. Seven players of that roster – yeah, are either done for this season or it had extended periods. I think the craziest one. Nuts. I think the craziest one is the trade that you pulled off. Yeah, and, and so get this: you, you are now the winner of that trade. So I did a trade uh, in that league with my sister. I gave her three players. She gave me three players. 
One of the players I received was Shahid, uh, who is done for the season. Mm-hmm. Two of the players that she got were Coughlin and Ayuk, who are done for the season. Yeah. And this is a trade that was just pulled off about two, three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And we've each traded players that are done for the season. Yeah. That is, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's Three insane. of those players are done for the season. <laughs> that were involved in that trade. And what I feel is almost worse is that Godwin went off against me before he got hurt. <laughs> so that's just that's just how things go. Now, I got to say, I, I texted my sister. In that trade, I got Darnold and Bucky Irving. Mm-hmm. I heard that those guys do not want to step on the field this week because knowing what they know <laughs> about my team – they may end their seasons yeah. this weekend. They're, they're very nervous, especially, <sighs> you know, coming up on Halloween weekend and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be nervous. Oh, my God. Um, speaking of nervous, I am quite nervous for my matchup this week because I talked about spoilers. Um, I'm against Sammy. And now we're at the point where whoever plays Sammy has immense pressure on themselves because you don't want to be the team that gives up the first win to Sammy. And that that uh, projected scores is really close. close. Yeah. I'm projected 135. He's 127. Because we're kind of on top of our teams, I would assume that uh, our lineups are pretty much set. The only thing that I'm thinking about uh, is having a tight end change. There's a couple guys that I I would want and I'm okay with. So my tight end slot is probably going to change, but the projection probably won't be too much different. Maybe a point or two higher or lower, depending on how they feel about the matchups. Um, like I said, Cooper cup looks like he's going to be back. So I'm going to play him just thinking that Matthew Stafford's going to want to get him going. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited about that to see him. Hopefully Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs continue their hot streak. Um, Devonte Adams, I'm going to stick with him because he's going up against new England. Also Aaron Jones in that Rams game, the Rams defense is just awful. So I'm going to play him. So two, two Thursday night players makes me a little bit nervous, but, um, I would like to get my week off right. I'm going to probably stick with the Denver defense because they're going up against Carolina. Um, I'm sitting Devontae Smith, even though he's going against a bad Cincinnati offense or defense. I just think they're going to rely on Saquon and um, A.J. Brown a little bit more. So I, it's kind of I want to see it from Devontae Smith before I put him back in the lineup. Yeah. And I'm sitting Malik Neighbors because he's playing Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know, everyone was looking forward to him getting back into that uh, starting lineup and uh, had a little bit of a down game this week. So, uh, and Daniel Jones has just been God awful. Mm -hmm. So, I I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, neighbors will find his footing again. Yeah. And Sammy um, looks like his his lineup's pretty standard. The thing that scares me is Houston's going up against Indianapolis. Their defense is awful. A.J. Brown going up against Cincinnati. Their defense is awful. a-Chan going up against Arizona. Now, they did stop the run pretty good, like you mentioned last night. Um, so that might actually be a tricky matchup. Josh Jacobs against Jacksonville, easy matchup. So Sammy's got a lot of good matchups. Similar, I mean, I do too. So this could be a really high-scoring matchup, which which would be a lot of fun. Will this be the week? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope it's close. I hope we see some signs of light from Sammy's team. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be the first one especially my team's kind of getting on a roll here. Um, The next matchup I'm looking at is Becky and Malik. This is the battle for sixth place, basically. Um, Mm -hmm. At the moment, Malik hasn't made any lineup changes. No surprise. I will talk to him tomorrow, so no big deal there. Becky's like, no, no. Don't (laughs) talk to him. Um, But Becky's team has got to get going. Marvin Harrison Jr., like I said, he's struggling. Deontay Johnson, Denver is not an easy matchup, so that's going to be tough. Um, Jordan Mason going up against Dallas should be good. David Montgomery going up against Tennessee. Tennessee is a tough defense. Um, I will be there live, live in the audience this Sunday. Awesome. Uh, Drake London going against, uh, Tampa Bay, who's been just giving up so many yards. So that that could be a a good game. Um, and then Malik's got Lamar Jackson going up against Cleveland. That's actually pretty tough. Terry McLaurin going up against Chicago. That's a tough matchup. So Malik's got a lot of tough matchups. Got to replace Jamison Williams now with the suspension. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll sort it out tomorrow. Uh, George Kittle going up against Dallas, but he's also questionable. So once again, Malik's, t- Malik's team, as much as he's been not paying attention, his team is in turmoil is. outside of that. Buys and injuries have decimated his team. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, you go from one Tysic to the next, and you take on Marie's team, and Uh-oh. your guys' projection is a point nine difference at the moment. I'm favored, though. Yeah. You, um, you have Debo still in at the moment, like we said. Well, don't I got to wait for uh, the waiver wire to play out. Yeah. Um, and, and we I'll don't know his status either. There, there's, there's a chance he could play. Um, we don't know DK Metcalf's status, um, so he could not play in this game as well. So there's some things to figure out. Um, Tank's big, Tank Bigsby is in your lineup. Are you going him. with him? Yeah, I got him back in the uh, flex spot. Okay. Um, he had a pretty big game this past weekend. He looks like he's the number one guy in that offense. Uh, so he's back in the flex spot. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I'm so... I'm I'm pretty ticked off with Purdy uh, with his performance this past week, but I'm going to give him another go against Dallas. Yeah. Uh, if I get another bad game from him, I might make the switch to Darnold mm-hmm. at quarterback, but we'll see. Um, and, uh, again, Brees Hall, Kyron Williams, so dependable. Uh, they stay in. I think I'm going to stick with Otten, who had a big game uh, last night. Uh, Diggs has been very, very consistent. He had a down game this past weekend, but, um, I'm at the point now where in, unless he has a bye week Diggs stays in, uh, and, uh, I don't think I'm going to make many other changes. Uh, San Francisco defense has been fairly consistent for me and they're going, uh, against the Dallas offense. That's been sort of in shambles yeah. lately. So, uh, so I'm going to make some minor changes here. I'm going to keep my eye on Debo. If he's out this weekend, uh, like I said, I'm going to hit the waiver wire, try and pick up some wide receivers and make some changes there. Yeah, and hopefully we get news on him rather quickly because he does play the Sunday night game, so that's always a tough replacement sometimes. Yeah. Um, It looks like, oh, Marie still has to put C.D. Lamb into her lineup, and I'm assuming that De- uh, DeAndre Swift is also going to go into the lineup. Quick question for you, though. I know it's it sounds wild, but this is where my brain goes. Jared Goff up against the Titans defense. They they are terrible as a team, but their defense as far as passing goes is still one of the best in the league. Mm-hmm. Kansas City going up against Las Vegas. Do you try to go back to to Mahomes or do you ride Jared Goff's hot streak? Right now, I would ride Goff. Um I I I I don't know. He's just been on fire. Did you hear this is such an amazing stat. The Lions have more touchdowns on the season than Goff has incompletions. Yeah. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. So you got to go with the hot hand. Why in, why in the world would you overthink this and go, uh, he has kind of a good matchup. No, yeah. go that's with just, the hot hand. That's man. just how my cutesy uh, fantasy days go. So <laughs> just curious. Um, so there's some lineup decisions to be made in this matchup. Uh, there's a name that just frightens me, Derrick Henry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Uh, that's another thing that I heard people talking about <sighs> on a fantasy podcast. Two names that you don't want to see across the, the way from your fantasy matchup are Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry because you're just terrified of what they're going to do. Yeah, and uh, I can't. I think it was during the, uh, the Peyton and Eli show, I was watching a little bit of that on Monday night, and they were imitating defenders having to tackle Derrick Henry. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, will someone please block me so I don't have to tackle mm-hmm. Derrick Henry? That's how terrifying he is. Yeah. And then finally, we have Ian going up, going up against Tracy. Again, two of the hottest teams, I would say, in the league right now. Um, Ian's got to replace Mike Evans on the week. Um, ooh, did they already rule him out? Looks like That it. was pretty quick. Oh, he's going to be out for three games. Yeah. Um. So once again, those Tampa Bay uh, receivers, those should be at a priority. Either Jalen McMillan or Sterling Shepard, kind of whoever you project to be that guy. Um, those could be big acquisitions. And like you said, Kate Otten might turn into the number one guy for Baker Mayfield for a few weeks. You know, there's a, a guy in those Tampa Bay offices on the phone right now, desperately trying yeah. to work out a trade. Yeah. They got to bring in a veteran, uh, to fill in. Uh, I mean, Evans will be back eventually, but Godwin's done for the season there. Yeah. I can hear. Well, that's where I heard some people saying Cooper cup's name for yeah. Tampa Bay because he, he perfectly fits into the Godwin role. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a decision for uh, Ian to make, um, who to replace with for Evans. But St. Brown's been really good. Kenneth Walker and Saquon have been two of the best running backs. Bowers has been one of the best tight ends. Jaden Reed, as inconsistent as he has been, he's going up against Jacksonville, so there's always a chance for a big blow-up game. 
Garrett Wilson going up against New England. And then, like we always say for Tracy, Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, you never want to see those two across from you either. Right. Um, so that's scary. Kamara needs a bounce back game. I think Javante Williams should be good going up against Carolina. Sam Laporta, I would probably Give consider swapping him. him. Yeah. I don't think I would drop him just because of the potential. Um, especially with Jameson Williams being out for two games, maybe that increases his his work. But unfortunately, Kyle Pitts isn't much of an improvement in that position. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Who are they going up against? Uh, Tampa, Bay. Tampa Bay. See, I, that's where I might play matchups a little bit. Yeah. Um, Kyle Pitts, he might be a better. I don't know. That's that's tough. It's hard to hit, sit Sam Laporta after last season, but he's just struggled. And then Zay Flowers, that's another one to watch out for. He might not play in this game. So, uh, Bateman is on the waiver wire. That might yeah, be that, a band aid. That could be a good option. I know she's still without Olave. He's coming back from concussion, so he might be back this week. So she could plug him in. But I mean, New Orleans still has their rookie quarterback playing. So it's if you trust him or not. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and like we said, Kareem Hunt could slot in for Ian. Well, that's what I was just looking at was if I was in, uh, Bench Evans, I, you can move Wilson into that slot and then put Hunt in the flex. That's yeah. that's what I do. But what do I know? <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got some options. That's for sure. Um, and yeah, so those are our matchups uh, for Week Eight. Like I said, we are on the downslope of the fantasy season. I feel like that's crazy to talk about. Um, once again, just it seems like it goes so quickly um, every week, but. Now is the time to get your winning streaks in. Um, and the trade deadline is only, I think there's like two or three weeks, maybe, maybe two weeks. Um, so if you want to make a trade, you got to do it now. If, if you can find something. We did have a trade last week. Um, Becky traded with Sammy. I believe it was Jordan Mason for Cole Komet. Um, seemed like it, it helped both teams. Um, but if you need to make any trades, look out there for them. Hit the waiver wire. Like I said, there's a lot of good options, I think, this week. And uh, yeah, good luck in week eight. And hopefully, 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 we have less injuries this week. Please.